It begins with a paradox that forces us to reconsider how we understand the restless earth beneath our feet. What if the shaking of the ground was not only born of tectonic collisions, volcanic unrest, or the snapping of faults, but also the howling fury of storms thousands of kilometers away? What if hurricanes and cyclones, whipping across the seas, were capable of reaching into the crust and hammering it like a mallet striking a drumhead, producing tremors comparable in strength to earthquakes of magnitude 3.5? For over a decade this idea simmered on the periphery of geophysics. Then, through meticulous research, scientists uncovered something startling. More than 10,000 of these so-called stormquakes were recorded between 2006 and 2019 across North American waters. They are not mere curiosities. They are physical proof that Earth's dynamic system is tightly interconnected, where atmosphere, ocean and solid crust merge in ways once thought impossible. So what exactly makes a stormquake? And why do some hurricanes generate hundreds of them, while others leave no trace? To untangle the mechanism, we must enter the hidden world of ocean waves, seabed geometry, and seismic energy transfer. Unlike tectonic quakes triggered by the rupture of faults under accumulated stress, storm quakes emerge when storm-driven ocean waves transform into deep, rhythmic pulses that hammer continental shelves and shallow submarine banks. These impacts, repeated endlessly over hours or days, inject enough force into the seabed to shake the crust like a bell, radiating seismic signals recorded by instruments thousands of kilometers away. Between 2006 and 2019, researchers catalogued stormquake events across several hotspots, the broad continental shelf off Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, George Bank off New England, the Grand Banks near Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, and parts of coastal British Columbia. These locations are not arbitrary. Each represents a setting where shallow waters over wide shelves act as amplifiers of storm-driven wave energy. When hurricane or nor'easter waves travel across these geometries, their energy concentrates and rhythmically presses against the seabed. The result is a series of ground motions indistinguishable from small tectonic earthquakes. The strongest of these reach equivalents with magnitude 3.5 tremors enough to be felt if they occurred on land. Take Hurricane Bill in August of 2009. For roughly 30 hours, as Bill moved past George Bank near New England, it generated a flurry of more than 300 stormquake events. Each was a pulse of energy radiating from the shelf, traveling through the crust, and eventually registering on seismometers thousands of miles away. Bill became the textbook case the one most often cited because it showcased every piece of the puzzle, a strong storm, the right seabed geometry, and an extended duration of wave activity. In contrast, Hurricane Sandy in 2012, one of the largest and most destructive storms in recorded Atlantic history, failed to produce similar stormquakes. Why? The reason lies not in its size or intensity, but in the lack of the proper seabed conditions beneath its path. Without broad shelves or shallow banks to trap and magnify the wave energy, Sandy's ocean fury, though massive, did not produce stormquake-class seismic events. This dependency reveals a critical principle. Stormquakes require not just violent storms, but the geological amplifier beneath them. The continental shelf is the stage and the hurricane is the drummer. Together, they create seismic music that our instruments can detect. Without the stage, the drumbeat disperses into the deep ocean unnoticed. This makes stormquakes a rare hybrid phenomenon demanding both atmospheric power and geological architecture. Now, consider what it means that over 10,000 of these events were documented in a span of just 13 years. That averages nearly 800 per year, far from being occasional anomalies. Many of these came not from headline-making hurricanes, but from smaller storms and even post-tropical cyclones. It suggests that stormquakes are a routine part of the ocean atmosphere solid earth system, wherever conditions align. Yet until 2019, they remained hidden, buried in seismic catalogues misclassified as background noise. Only with refined methods could scientists untangle the signatures of storm-driven ground motions from those of tectonic origin. Technically, the mechanism hinges on something called infragravity waves. 
When a storm whips up the sea, it produces not only the familiar short-period wind waves, but also longer-period oscillations. These long waves, with periods of about 20 to 200 seconds, carry vast amounts of energy. As they propagate onto continental shelves, their energy couples with the sea floor. If the shelf is broad and shallow enough, the infragravity waves resonate, repeatedly pounding the seabed at low frequencies. This resonance acts like a piston driving pressure variations deep into the crust. The result? Seismic energy radiates outward, producing tremors. It is this repetitive, piston-like forcing that separates stormquakes from other ocean-related seismic phenomena. We already knew that ocean waves could generate micro-seisms, the faint tremors always humming through seismic records. But stormquakes represent a step change in intensity and coherence. They are not just faint hums, but sharp, localized bursts that mimic true earthquakes. The fact that some reach the equivalent of magnitude 3.5 shows how efficient the wave shelf coupling can be. Imagine the enormous transfer of energy required. Atmospheric chaos through waves, striking geology hard enough to be detected as a quake. The first hints came as far back as September 2008, during Hurricane Ike in the Gulf of Mexico. Researchers noted strong seismohydrodynamic signals along the continental shelf with seismic stations detecting unusual tremor patterns linked to storm-driven surges. But it was not until years later, when systematic analysis was performed across datasets from 2006 onward, that the full scale of the phenomenon emerged. Ike was not alone. Hurricane Irene, in 2011, moving near the Little Bahama Bank and off Florida, produced similar signals. Hurricane Maria, in 2017, a devastating system across the Caribbean left coherent, long-lasting seismic wave fields in its wake. Piece by piece, the pattern became impossible to ignore. Why does this matter? For one, it forces us to revise how we think about the global seismic record. Thousands of events once attributed to tectonic processes or dismissed as noise are in fact the fingerprints of storms. This complicates seismic monitoring, but also enriches it, providing a new tool to study both storms and the solid earth. A stormquake catalogue is like a diary of atmospheric fury written into the crust itself. Each entry is not only a quake, but also a record of how ocean waves and seafloor interact under extreme conditions. More intriguingly, stormquakes blur disciplinary boundaries. They are not strictly geological, nor strictly meteorological, nor strictly oceanographic. They are the nexus of all three. To study them is to acknowledge that the Earth system is indivisible. Atmosphere feeds ocean, ocean hammers crust, crust shakes back. It is a reminder that the solid Earth is not isolated from the weather above it. Every hurricane that roars across the Atlantic or Pacific has the potential, under the right conditions, to leave behind not only destruction on shore, but also seismic signatures echoing in the crust. If stormquakes can mimic tectonic earthquakes in seismic records, can they also influence tectonic processes in subtle ways? Could repeated pounding of continental shelves by infragravity-driven resonance gradually weaken sediments or faults preconditioning them for failure? These are open questions not yet answered, but they showcase the provocative implications of the discovery. Scientists know that even small perturbations can sometimes nudge faults toward rupture if they are already critically stressed. Stormquake energy, though relatively modest, is persistent and widespread. Over decades or centuries, its cumulative effects remain unknown. The geographical distribution of stormquake hotspots also invites speculation. Why do certain shelves like George Bank or the Grand Banks appear so efficient while others remain silent? Is it purely geometry, or do sediment type, crustal rigidity, and stratigraphy play roles? Does climate change, with its potential to produce stronger and more frequent storms, mean we will see more stormquakes in the future? And if stormquakes can radiate across continents, as Bills did, does that provide an unintentional method of remote sensing storms via seismic waves, even in the absence of satellites? These are not trivial questions. They cut to the core of how we monitor both hazards and climate. Stormquakes may become a natural laboratory, a way to measure how storms evolve and how shelves respond. They may help us refine climate models by offering indirect but physical evidence of storm intensity. 
They may even paradoxically improve our understanding of tectonic quakes by forcing us to filter out storm-driven signals more carefully. But perhaps the most compelling aspect is the sheer drama of the mechanism itself. Picture the sequence. A hurricane spins across the Atlantic, driving monstrous waves. Those waves travel outward, their energy reaching continental shelves hundreds of kilometers away. There the seabed becomes a resonant surface, each long wave pressing downward like a giant hand slamming a drum. The crust quivers, seismic waves ripple outward, and seismometers in distant lands register the impacts as if faults had ruptured, all of it from sky to sea to stone woven into a single event. That is the stormquake, a geological echo of atmospheric fury, hidden until recently but now undeniable. The distinction between ordinary microseisms and stormquakes is also crucial. Microseisms are generated by interactions of ocean waves, particularly when opposing wave trains collide and generate pressure fluctuations at double the wave frequency. They are ever present, a kind of background heartbeat of the ocean detectable worldwide. Stormquakes, in contrast, arise from focused, low frequency forcing tied directly to the storm system and the geometry of the shelf. They are episodic, spiking in bursts of activity during storms and can be traced to specific geographic origins. This makes them not only fascinating phenomena, but also potential tools for remote sensing storms in historical records. Consider again Hurricane Bill in August of 2009. The cluster of 300 stormquake events over 30 hours was not just a fluke. Each event corresponded to the storm's infragravity wave field sweeping across George Bank, hammering it repeatedly as the hurricane tracked northward. Seismometers in far-flung places, thousands of miles from the Atlantic, recorded the signals with clarity. This demonstrated the remarkable efficiency of energy transfer, atmospheric winds to ocean waves, to infragravity, resonance to seismic shaking. Bill's passage essentially wrote its signature into Earth's crust, creating a seismological narrative of its fury. The cautionary case of Hurricane Sandy in 2012 emphasizes the dependence on seafloor shape. Despite Sandy's colossal size and destructive power, it failed to generate stormquakes in the known hotspots. Its path did not align with regions where infragravity resonance could couple effectively with the seabed. The absence of stormquakes in such a major storm proves that stormquakes cannot be used as a direct proxy for storm intensity. Instead, they are a conditional phenomenon, powerful where conditions align, absent where they do not. This nuance is critical for interpreting seismic records correctly. There are also open questions regarding long-term geological impacts. Could repeated stormquake activity weaken shelf sediments, promoting submarine landslides or slope failures over geological timescales? Could stormquake forcing interact with existing fault zones, perhaps acting as a trigger under critical stress conditions? While magnitude 3.5 equivalents are modest compared to tectonic giants, their cumulative effect, repeated thousands of times over decades, could matter. The ocean does not simply brush against the land, it hammers it persistently, and persistence in geology often yields results. Looking forward, one must also ask how a warming climate might alter stormquake occurrence. With sea surface temperatures rising, hurricanes are projected to become stronger and wetter, with greater capacity to generate long-lived infragravity wave fields. If such storms intersect with resonant shelves, we may see an uptick in stormquake frequency and intensity. Already the catalogue of over 10,000 stormquakes from just 13 years underscores that the phenomenon is anything but rare. In a future of heightened storms, the crust may record even more of these atmospheric seismic interactions. In the end, stormquakes symbolise the hidden connectivity of Earth's systems. They are not tectonic, yet they shake the crust. They are not meteorological, yet they depend on storms. They are not purely oceanographic, Yet they emerge from wave dynamics. Instead, they embody the fusion of atmosphere, ocean, and lithosphere. Every stormquake is a reminder that Earth is a single integrated system where boundaries between disciplines blur. The thunder of the sky becomes the rumble of the ground. The discovery of stormquakes is less about adding a new entry in seismic catalogues and more about unveiling the deep physical unity of Earth. 
With over 10,000 events identified between 2006 and 2019, the message is unmistakable. The atmosphere and ocean do not just shape the surface of the planet, they also shake its very bones. Each storm quake is an atmospheric fingerprint etched into the crust, a transient yet enduring record of how storms and geology dance together. And now that we know, the responsibility lies with us, scientists, communicators and the public alike, to pay attention to these tremors. They are not warnings of tectonic disaster, but they are profound clues about the way our world works. Stormquakes show us that the boundaries between air, sea and stone are porous, fluid and alive. If this investigative journey into the hidden world of stormquakes has sparked your curiosity about Earth's dynamic processes, don't keep it to yourself. Like, share and subscribe so that more people can discover how storms can rattle the crust as surely as tectonic forces. And don't forget to tap that hype icon, help push this story into a wider audience, because the more we understand the astonishing unity of our planet, the better prepared we are to face its challenges and marvel at its mysteries.